Hello and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I'm going to be using the lab box again to develop some film. This time I'm going to be using the 35mm module of the lab box to develop some 35mm film. Check out the other video I did on the 120 film to see what equipment I bought to facilitate this process and also the chemicals I purchased and mixed to um, develop the film. I've already pre-prepared my chemistry for this week's video. So I've got my developer ready, Kodak HC110. Um, I've also got some prepared Ilfa stop and also some Ilford Rapid Fixer, which I've used about four times now, and you can use it about 20 times before it's exhausted. And the stop will change colour uh, to purple when it's spent, and as you can see, it's still very much an orange colour, so it's still good to go. And then finally, as part of the rinse, I've also mixed up some PhotoFlow to help with the drying process. It's, the aim is that it doesn't leave so many drying marks and these are good, clean, clear finish and gen generally I found that it does does do that. So in order to develop in the lab box I'm going to have to go out and shoot some film. So I'm going to load some film into the Olympus OM2N and I'll go out and take some compositions. See you in a minute or two. Right, I've finished the film, 36 exposures, so let's get the film out of the camera. There we go. Put that to one side. I have got a tool uh, which you can use if you if the leader does go inside the cassette, but to save that bother, I just made sure that I had some sticking out when I finished unwinding the roll. So there we go. I got my film. The next step is going to be setting up the cassette for the lab box. Um, so this is the reel that the film will eventually wind on inside the lab box. So you've got uh, some arrows and there's some corresponding left symbols and right symbols on the cartridges which help you to align what you need to do. So there's the arrow. There's the arrow. So it goes in that way. Let's twist. There we go, and it's locked in place. So that's that one done. It's the same with the right. And if you look on the top as well, you can see you can see that they've aligned up. So they're they're good to go. So so I'm going to click this in, click in, also need to make sure I put this in, I forgot to put this in once and um, it didn't go so well. So there it is, configured for 35mm film, so then that fits, so the 
this fits in this way to align with the crank, like so, and then the guide fits in there. That's correct. So checklist, like I said, checklist before I start is the film guide is in the correct position, the reels are aligned, and the marks correspond. Like I said in the previous video, most failures with the lab box that I've seen are to do with the incorrect assembly of this. It's a limit mistake. You can buy a whole new assembly like this and then keep one for 120 film and then one already set up for 35mm film. So then once you've once you're sure that the the setup is correct, then you don't need to worry about the assembly again. For now I'm just sticking with one lot of cassettes and reels and hopefully fingers crossed the rolls have gone okay for me so far. Apart from the time where I forgot to fit this. The film still developed uh, and I got some decent results but it was a foolish thing to do and I need to make sure I check the checklist to ensure that, that all the parts go in. So let's reassemble the lab box. Real crank like so. And then the film guide. Which is incorrectly. Right now I can load the film. Right, so take the exposed film and just cut the tail off the film so you've got a straight edge. Like so. Open the lid and place the roll in the film slot. Then slide the film under the two metal pins. So you can see the metal pins here. So take the metal clip then and hook the film, press the clip with your fingers until you hear it click. So again with the 120 film you've got to try and clip it as close as you can into the centre. It's a little bit easier with 35mm film because it's not as wide. Still fiddly though. So it's quite good with the 35 as you can you can see the film already start to go down the guide, the film guide. Um, you can't really do this with the 120 film unless you're okay with sacrificing the first frame as I, I did on my first go because I just wanted to make sure that the film did go down the guide correctly. Right, so I now, can now close the lid. Like so. And then I can wind on the film now to get the film all onto the reel. So let's go. So that's as far as it goes. Won't wind any further. So now there's a lever at the back of the box which you press which then cuts the film through those two blades. That's why it's important to put the film under those two um, blades, or not two blades, but two metal bars. So let's give that a whirl. So I push the grey lever upwards on the back to release the film from the cartridge. Like so. And then once you've cut the film, you can then wind the last part onto the reel. So there we go, all the film is now on the reel, and I can now start pouring the chemicals to develop the film. So the rest now should be like the 120 film, in that I just go through the chemicals, 
call into the time on my app, the massive dev film chart. Um, so the film I've got in here is um, a cheap film called Kent Mia 400. I say cheap, it's still about four quid a roll. And as I said before in the previous lab box video, I'm using Kodak HC110 and the recommended method for developing in the lab box is a 300ml solution of each of the chemicals with continuous agitation. So that's literally winding the crank all the time that the chemicals are in the actual lab box. And then also um, it recommends that you kind of tilt the box while you're, while you're agitating just to make sure that the edges um, get fully developed. So I'm just waiting until the uh, temperature of the chemicals are all about 20 degrees um, consistently. I've put some water into this container, some colder water, to try and reduce the temperature. As long as I get the equipment right and the film loaded onto the reel correctly, that all goes smoothly. But what seems to take the longest time is trying to get the, the chemicals to the right temperature. So maybe I need to just develop with the room temperature of whatever it is today and then adjust using the app, the timings, to suit. Has anyone had any success with that? Please put it in the comments below. Or if you've got another suggestion for how I can get the temperature of the water and the temperature of the chemicals at a consistent 20 degrees and stay that way for the development time, then please put your suggestion in the comments. And as long as it's not too expensive, I'll definitely um, consider something to make things a little bit easier for myself. What I've started doing as well, because I always find that I'm over temperature, is I go downstairs to the freezer and get an ice block and that, that helps to lower the temperature a little bit faster. There we go, one ice block. Hopefully once I get this right, I can start thinking about developing colour film then. And obviously colour film is a lot more temperature sensitive. So if I'm struggling with black and white, getting it just to 20 degrees, then obviously I need a bit more practice before I migrate to colour and transparency developing. Just running through the timings, so I'm going to use developer for 6 minutes, then the stop bath for 1 minute, and then the fixer for 5 minutes. This is then followed in the sink with a 10 minute wash and rinse, and the last 30 seconds or so in the filter flow just like I said before, just to help with the drying process. And the great thing with this app is you just set it going and it'll kind of talk you through the whole thing and let you know when you need to change the chemicals. Right, we're there. So let's pull in the developer. Six minutes. Kent Mia 400 HC110. Dilution 1 plus 31. There we go, that's the end of the development phase. So let's get rid of the developer. And in with the stop back. with the stop. In 
with the fixer, the smelliest part. So I've got to be careful not to spill anything here because it really does reek. normally do this part next to an open window because it helps to um, minimize the smell. My next fixer will definitely be an odorless fixer, that's for sure. So five minute fixing time now. So with this fixer, Ilford recommend you can develop 24 rolls of film. So just for safety, I'm only probably going to use it for about 10 rolls, maybe even six or a lesser amount to get rid of the fixer more quickly. There we go, that's the end of the fixing stage. So I can now open the tank. So you can see the the film's gone on correctly onto the reels. So and I can see it looks like to be developed. So what I can do now is I can disconnect disconnect the module, take out the, the sort of film guide. To prolong the life of the blade. Now let's go and do the rinse. See you in a bit. So, eye indications, the results look great. There's a couple negatives that um, didn't work for whatever reason, probably human error, probably uh, forgot to take the lens cap off or forgot to wind the film on, but generally it worked really well. So here's a selection of my favourites, let me know in the comments below which ones you prefer. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that video. I certainly enjoyed making it and it was a lot less stressful than when I did the 120 film through the lab box. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.